I guess this will be sort of a cluster question. But do you see, um, does the FRSO kind of view capitalism as sort of staying in this sort of phase, or do you think it's progressing in any sort of phases, or does the question make sense, really? Or is it sort of just like, yes, we accept the current conditions of what capitalism is, or do you think, I mean, I think, so, especially with things like uh, ecological crisis or other crises, or do you think, uh, yeah. obviously the financial crisis is somewhat stabilized, but even then it's still shaky as well as it can, it, it's obviously going to still keep happening, but. So, so capitalism goes through periodic crises, and that changes things during those periods, changes conditions. Um, we view uh, uh, imperialism on a whole as being a general crisis. Um, you know, that's uh, it's, uh, social, political, and economic. You know, it's uh, losing credibility around the world as, uh, as uh, movements for socialism and that national liberation uh, gain ground. Um, so um, we don't think there's uh, any sort of new uh, stage beyond the, uh, imperial, the stage of imperialism and proletarian revolution. Um, uh, we think uh, there's not a qualitative difference between imperialism now and imperialism uh, when Lenin uh, wrote his book about it. Um, but that's not to say that there aren't, uh, you know, concrete changes and, and basic conditions for people. Does that answer your question? Is that what you're getting at? Yeah, it does. I mean, uh, obviously, it kind of gets in there. I mean, I, I guess we'll turn the discussion to this then. Uh, we were talking about this earlier, the certain notion of ultra leftism getting too far ahead of actual, I guess, concrete struggles, right? Getting into theoretical. And, and again, one of the popular notions is that for some god awful reason, like hard negative, like take up or struggles over intellectual property, struggles over other sort of things, or even G Deck points out, oh yeah, it's now proletarianization of genetic codes of ecology, of other sort of things that more more and more people are excluded from. So do you think these are just uh, a sort of deviationist notions, or should we just be focusing on actual worker struggles, uh, demands of workers, and then building a party out of that? Um, you know, I, I think that uh, uh, if we're going to build a working class party, the way we're going to build it is out of the class struggle. But, you know, we also need to uh, work with um, oppressed nationalities uh, who uh, their struggles are, uh, uh, you know, national liberation struggles that uh, involve multiple classes, and we can unite with other classes as well. So it's not like a a pure proletarian revolution, kind of Trotskyist view. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we uh, we think that uh, you know we have a, a document uh, as part of our program which we're developing called Class in the U.S. and Our Strategy for Revolution. And it's back there on the table, so you should read it. But <clears throat> it gives a class analysis of the United States and says where we should concentrate our, our forces and, and that kind of thing. And basically, it's uh, it's yeah we we need to work in the uh, within the, the working class, uh, particularly the lower sections of the working class, um, where conditions are the worst and most difficult. Um, uh, we need to work amongst uh, organized workers uh, because the unions are there and uh, they're powerful instruments of class struggle if they are transformed into them. Uh, uh, we also need to organize unorganized people um, and we need to build work in uh, movements of press nationalities and develop that as part of building a strategic alliance. But, you know, again, that's not all that we do. We do anti-war organizing, community organizing, and stuff like that. You know, we have, uh, we have uh, relations with other parties in other countries, like uh, the Workers' Party of Belgium, um, the Communist Party of the Philippines, uh, Maoists in Nepal or India, uh, the FARC in Colombia, the Revolutionary Armed Forces of Colombia. And, uh, you know, what, uh, you know, we want to give solidarity to, to those struggles, and that means uh, struggles to end U.S. imperialism and U.S. intervention in those countries. And that's a, another big part of what we do. So, so then I guess personally, though, do you consider these sort of like more like theoretical, like things are getting too far ahead of these sort of struggles that don't necessarily apply to like, okay, but how can we apply this to actual concrete worker struggles now? Do you consider that a bad deviation um, that needs to work in class? Or I mean, I, I think that um, I'm not opposed to uh, uh, theory for theory's sake or, or studying that kind of thing, but I think uh, that revolutionaries need to prioritize their time and uh, deal with uh, mostly with stuff that they're going to they're going to find useful uh, towards you know, party building. Um, you know, I haven't read uh, Hart and Agri really, so I can't really comment on that. Yeah, yeah, I don't think I really was. <laughs>
I mean, it seems to me like, at least in the United States, in comparison to a lot of these places where communism is springing up and being organized and actually doing things, the United States is, would be, in a lot of people's ideas, the last place where this would happen. And I think, you know, obviously, the working poor, as opposed to just workers and middle class and things like that, um, I think that we face kind of a, a different sort of challenge of organization. If it, if it can happen here, it has to happen. It seems like a very different way uh, because you know we have a huge middle class here. We have lots of gated communities, and you know, and by gated communities, I don't mean physically gated communities, but I mean like uh, populations of workers isolated. I mean, we're you know, at least on an international sense, you know, we're all the the labor aristocracy here. So, um, is the idea is that we try to maybe educate or convert some of these people that are more in the middle and try to get them to, you know, empathize with this, or is it more like, okay, let's get the people that are empathetic with us now and try to organize them? Or like our, our view isn't uh, uh, like third worldist. You know, we, we don't have a view that. Uh, the working class in this country is sold out and no good, and that uh, we have to rely on revolutions in other countries to overthrow U.S. imperialism. We think uh, uh, they're they're doing that, and it's great, but U.S. imperialism is our monster to slay. Um, and uh, so our view is that if people are, are uh, fighting uh, against U.S. imperialism, objectively, uh, we want to unite with that and try to build working class leadership within, within those struggles. Um, Based on, you know, the class interests of working people. Uh, so, um, you know, again, we, we work in uh, a whole series of trade unions, and we found a lot of success there. Um, you know, I'm talking about unions that are, uh, uh, you know, we have uh, unions with clerical workers, we have unions with uh, janitors and hospital workers, and uh, small manufacturing uh, that we work in and, and uh, try to, to help set on the basis of class struggle. Um, I, I don't know if that is uh, answering your question, but... Partially. It seems to me like the answer you're giving me is something along the lines of, well, whoever will take us, that's who we're going to try to organize. Is that... No. Um, we're going to try to mainly focus on organizing uh, people that are... Uh, that are uh, geared up and ready to fight, and we're going to organize amongst the advanced. Um, you know, we're going to have a strategic orientation within that and prioritize one thing over another. You know, we might say uh, it's better to work in UPS uh, uh, amongst workers and Teamsters because, uh, you know, like what the 1997 UPS strike proved is that um, the, the working uh, amongst warehouse and transportation is situated on the choking points of the economy. and. Uh, organize those workers to fight can have uh, rippling effects that course through all of uh, society. Um, so we're going to try to look at things uh, strategically, um, but uh, you know, we're also going to try to, uh, to, to make all the gains that we can, uh, and wherever we can, uh, within uh, a set uh, strategic framework and a set of priorities that we have. Do you guys want to ask any questions? Any discussions? Disagreements? Do you have any concluding thoughts? Advice for the RSU? Um, you know, just this. Uh, you know, if, if, uh, I, I think that your your group, the Revolutionary Student Union, is good. And I've, uh, I've enjoyed uh, the videos that you post and stuff like that. And I've tried to spread those around. And, and share with people. Um, I, I think that uh, you know we we need a, a, a communist party, and if uh, you're interested in Marxism and Leninism and uh, building a party like that, you should talk to me, and you should talk to us, and you should talk about uh, getting with us. Um, you know, uh, if you have uh, any questions that maybe we'll talk about that we can't talk about now, and we can talk about another time, I, uh, I'd be happy to do that. So. Um, thank you very much for your attention. Thanks for inviting me. Uh, it's been a pleasure getting to know you. Um, 
And I hope I see you again soon. Thank you.